Hi there, Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears. Going to be talking about 2015's Fantastic Four. Well, I've done many podcasts about the Marvel Universe and how I did read Marvel as a kid, and I did read Fantastic Four a bit. They weren't my favorite, but they were the first family of Marvel. It was like uh, if you read DC, you read Batman and Superman. If you read Marvel, you read Fantastic Four. There was a cartoon Fantastic Four. Um, They worked them into other things. But since Fox owned everything mutant, uh, X-Men, Deadpool, etc. They also own Fantastic Four. So we got the two Fantastic Four movies in the early 21st century that were pretty bad. They were what fan, uh, what superhero movies were before we figured out how to make a good superhero movie. This movie, on the other hand, is just a mistake. They had a great cast. You've got good filmmakers. I don't know why Simon Kinsberg continues to be involved with X-Men. He is, his name is on producer credits, sometimes writer credits on some of the biggest and best X-Men movies, but he directed and really worked on some of the worst X-Men movies, including this one. He directed the final one before Fox had to give the rights back to Marvel, and we're finally getting a Fantastic Four movie in a couple years that will hopefully do justice to the name. So I do own the original two movies. It's fun. They're fun to watch. I mean, they're mindless to a certain extent. I I loved how they did Silver Surfer. I liked a lot of the special effects. Chris Evans as Johnny Storm before he was ever Captain America is great. Jessica Alba was miscast as Sue Storm. All in all, Michael Chiklis is the thing. This is a good idea. You know, all in all, it wasn't, they weren't terrible, but they didn't set the world on fire, much like the rest of the Fox properties, other than a few X-Men movies that did really, really, really well. So now we fast forward to now, and after Josh Trank made Chronicle, which is a decent, independent, independent, artsy kind of art house version of a superhero story, kind of dark, but really well done. And then they give him like $150 million to do this and some other things. Well, he says that the studio meddled, and and I'm sure they did. Fox is known for meddling with all of the X-Men movies, good and bad. Did this movie probably need some meddling? Probably. Before I get into any spoilers, we'll just talk roughly about the movie. The short version is this is not a terrible made film. The dialogue is not great. The special effects are pretty good. Um, Pacing is okay, just considering that not a whole lot happens in the film. When we finally do get to see their special powers in full effect, it's good. It's the last 10 minutes of the movie. So, uh, should you watch it to complete your Marvel Universe whatever, uh, sure, But if you see it free one night on streaming, maybe. But I don't think you need to run right out and see this. Uh, There's a reason why it failed, and I'll get into that. But I have to kind of get into some spoilers. I will say that Miles Teller, well, part of the, the reason why fans didn't like the movie is they completely changed the origin story. They've made the entire cast younger, and they changed how they become the Fantastic Four. You could argue whether they made it more or less logical. I would probably say it's a little more logical this way, but they took the origin story, which could have been done in the first 15 minutes of a movie, and they made it the whole hour and 40-minute movie. That's pretty much it, the origin story. By the time they get to the end, we're ready for the next movie, and there's not going to be one. I mean, obviously, they hope they will. Like I said, I think the cast is pretty good. Miles Teller was great, as he is in everything. Michael B. Jordan as the Human Torch. He was pretty good. He wasn't Chris Evans good, though. Chris Evans was... That's, if you've read the comic, if you watch the cartoon, Human Torch character is a very cocky, young hothead. And I expected Michael B. Jordan to play that. He he becomes very much a nice guy. Um, Kate Mara as Sue Storm was fine. She's always a good actress, and she was fine. Jamie Bell as Ben Grimm, he was fine. 
Toby Kebbell as Dr. Doom, Baron Von Doom. He was a little better than fine. Tim Blake Nelson is in this, and he's in the Sony Mar... I mean, wow. Anyway. I think, like I said, the short version is, uh, you really don't need to see this. Wait for the MCU version of the Fantastic Four that'll be coming, I think, in 2024. So I will get into a few spoilers, but I won't like tell you exact plot points or get into the end or anything like that. I was hoping for a mid credit scene, though. There wasn't. There should have been. To let us know someone who met their demise may not. that you know That's kind of what we got in movies before there were mid credit scenes. There was always a little stab at the end of this kind of movie. So, like I said, a little spoilery. If you want to tune out, I get it. So again, they changed the origin story. In the original story, the the they're all scientists. They go into space. They get hit by cosmic radiation. They all change based on their DNA. They all change into different things. One guy gets rubbery. One girl can turn invisible. One guy becomes a rock thing. You know, one guy can flame on. This, they're young. Reed is recruited basically out of high-end high school to finish a project that they couldn't finish to teleport into another dimension. When they get into the other dimension, they get hit by the forces of that dimension and they come back with different powers. Now, when they get hit by the the energy from this other world that they go to, um, Michael B. Jordan's capsule catches on fire when the energy hits. So, boom, he gets the firepower. That makes sense. Um, rocks kind of magnetically attach to Jamie Bell's character. And with when the radiation hits, boom. So, it makes sense that he becomes the thing. Sue Storm wasn't on the planet, but she gets hit by a wave of power when they get back and kind of starts phasing out. Makes sense. All of it kind of made sense. Changes radically. The movie could have been longer, could have taken more time to develop the characters. They're supposed to eventually become a team. We feel like we rush through that, even though we've got an hour and 40 minutes. And that's basically all they're doing anyway. There's some scenes at the beginning where they show them as kids. Ben and Reed are friends in high school. There's a teacher who's kind of keeping them down. And they you expect a moment where they're going to kind of show him. But no. That's, it's just there and it's kind of superfluous other than the show that they were friends since kids. They could have cut to them as scientists, do the quick into, and then go ahead and get to something happening. So a little bit more spoiler-y, the four people that go over, since Sue doesn't go over, the guy that becomes Dr. Doom does. Baron Von Doom. And he gets left behind. You can tell that the radiation, he hits. He gets hit before everybody else and harder than everybody else. And so his helmet that he's wearing kind of fuses to his head. And you see that already happening when they lose him. And, they, and he gets stuck in this other dimension for a while before they go back. And when he comes back, he's got amazing powers. I think that was all handled pretty well, and he, Toby Kebbell does a great job. He's a really good Doctor Doom, especially some of the things he says towards the end. If the writing had been better, he could have really elevated that character. He did a good, probably my favorite part of the movie was Doom, but he's not in it a whole lot. I was ready for this adventure, this, uh, you know, he's going to, now that he's got all these powers, he's going to fight back against the four of them, and ah, they all team up to take him down at the end, and it kind of happens, and it's over. The whole movie is just kind of, light for what it should be this movie should be as epic as anything in the mcu i could imagine if the mcu made this early on you know iron man if you go back and watch it is pretty you know it doesn't have a lot of special effects it's not a big budget movie really it just kind of lays the groundwork for what's to come this movie comes well into you know mcu's cooking along x-men movies were cooking along how did this happen I heard at the time that it was kind of rushed that they were going to lose the rights soon, so they wanted to get a Fantastic Four film made. But I don't know. It just feels like they tried to make a small film out of it, a small origin story when it should have been the birth of the Marvel's first family. 
Maybe they couldn't. Maybe Marvel wouldn't let them do certain things. I don't know. You know, there's machinations going on behind the scenes between these Sony owning some of the rights and Fox owning some of the rights until Fox merged into Disney. But um, we don't really know why things happen the way they happen. But it's unfortunate that a good cast, a guy that was a pretty good director, at least he has been in the past, um, and a, and a team of professional people turned out a movie that just when it's over, like I said, it's not a terrible movie. Like it, the, some of the lines are terrible, but it's not. I mean, I watched it and went, well, I'm, I'm waiting for bad to happen. There was no laugh out loud. This is terrible. But there's also no laugh out loud. There's nothing really funny in the movie. Like I said, they all kind of become friends and it just kind of happens. There's no there's no electricity. There's no fire. There's no passion. There's no it just kind of plays out like a zillion other superhero. It almost feels like except for some of the special effects like a tv show like this was the the pilot for a proposed tv show it just didn't feel as epic well the last spider-man movie the last doctor strange movie you know these epic films and they had budgets near what or maybe a little more than what fantastic four had fantastic four spent a lot of money and the most of the special effects are in the last 10 minutes and they're pretty good it was nice seeing the Fantastic Four using their powers as they did in the comics and the cartoons, and that was kind of cool, but it all came at the very end, and there's not going to be any more. Well, I will say I expected it to be much worse than it was, but I'm glad it failed because it let Michael B. Jordan take the role as Killmonger, and he killed as Killmonger, and maybe he's going to have something important to do in the new sequel to the Black Panther movie. Everybody else has kind of gone on to do other things as well, and that's great. But this was not... It, somebody said, let's change the origin story. Let's make it a simple 90-minute movie. Let's Why? Save money? Mm. You got a property like this. Say what you will about the new Amazon show, whether you like it or not. Amazon knows what they have, and they spent gazillions of on it. I mean, that's the only way you're going to get it done these days. I'm not all for spending a billion dollars on entertainment, but if you have something with the the heft and the gravitas of Tolkien, throw the money at that. It's pretty well-written, well-worn stuff that everybody appreciates. So here you've got a, a comic series, a, a family of characters that are some of the most important in the Marvel Universe. They... I will say they weren't ever, I, I'm not the biggest fan. I, I thought it'd be cool to, you know, turn into fire and fly around. I, the other powers that I really care about so much. Weren't my favorite comic book, but I appreciated them and how they got along and how they solved problems together. That was part of the, the gist of it. And they, they come to all that at the very end of this movie. They just, again, they took what could have been a 15, 20 minute origin story or say the first third of the movie and they stretched it out for the entire movie. Hmm. I don't think that was the best idea, but what do I know? I don't get paid millions of dollars to make Hollywood films. Uh, I don't get paid a whole lot of money to review them. And hmm. I'm glad I saw it. I'm glad it's in the collection because I do own every Marvel movie, every MCU movie, and almost all of the non-MCU Marvel films. Would I go back and watch this at some point? There's some acting that's really good in it. There's some things that happen in it that's really good. Like I said, I like Doctor Doom quite a bit. I wish he was in it more. It's pretty brutal. It's almost R-rated so violent in the last part. When he comes back with his powers, he splatters people, and there's blood on the wall. I mean, it's it's hard PG-13, which that was kind of cool. But if you're going to make one of the, you know, if you're going to make at least part of the Marvel Universe dark, why don't you stick with Blade and things that are already dark? Why take Marvel's first family, uh, basically? Human Torch is all kind of like the kid of the, you know. And anyway, they didn't. They've changed the dynamic. They changed the origin. They changed. And I'm again, I'm fine with change if it works. Everything from Lord of the Rings to Dune to a lot of the Marvel movies have changed things, but it usually works. Hmm. Changing this did not work. They didn't prove their worth in changing what's canon.
So we'll see what MCU does with it. I'm kind of excited. After watching this, the possibilities. There were a few scenes that made me go, wow, that's a pretty good Fantastic Four kind of scene there. Just wish the whole movie had been that way. So watch it for free. I don't think you need to run out and buy it. I found, by the way, this is a plug for a company that didn't pay to be in here. I found a company through a uh, Facebook ad called Hamilton Book. It's a bookstore. Uh, I think they're in Ohio, Illinois, something like that, Kentucky, something. Um, I don't know how they are for books. They have some eclectic music and movies for incredible prices. I ordered like six, seven, eight things for $41. I got a season of 12 Monkeys on Blu-ray for a dollar. I got a season of Sherlock on 4K for $7. I mean, it was some pretty... So I just placed another order, and you'll hear the reviews here. It's some more eclectic stuff that's come out on 4K. These are like limited edition $50 4Ks I got for $19.99 and $24.99. They're sealed. They're new. I don't know why they're selling them so cheap. Maybe they've had them for a while, and they're just not selling. But anyway, HamiltonBook.com. Check them out. Their shipping is cheap. It's pretty fast and great deals on movies, pretty good deals on CDs. I'm going to have to shop at books. I really haven't looked at their books. <laughs> um, and yes, it's my last name. But that's not, I, it was a Facebook ad, and I clicked on it, and I looked, and I, I looked through their stuff, and I went, oh, well, I'm actually going to place an ad. And I placed it with PayPal. They take PayPal. Uh, that way I'm protected. I've been with PayPal since 2003. And um, this was one of the movies that came in, Fantastic Four. I got the Steelbook, limited edition Steelbook that's out of print uh, on Blu-ray for five bucks. It was worth five bucks to review it for you and to sit on my shelf and look pretty. Like I said, I'd pull that out again. I enjoyed part of Michael B. uh, Jordan's performance. I really liked uh, Toby Kebbell as Dr. Doom. Miles Teller is always good in things, but it was almost painful to watch him struggle as being rubber guy. And I don't think he got really good direction on being a rubber guy. There's a few things. I don't know. All in all, it it was, it was a good shot. It was a nice try, but there was, there's just too many mistakes, too many flaws happening even before they rolled cameras that they should have. I don't know what they were thinking. I probably thinking they could make two or three of these before they lost the rights. And then this one didn't do so well. They didn't make any more. That's a shame. Because there were, there were some good ideas here. Fantastic Four from 2015. You could probably skip that one. Not a terrible movie. Just not great and just not worth watching, really. I mean, it just kind of, when it's over, it's over and it's done. Which is kind of a shame considering the source material. I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rockfile. Thanks for checking out this podcast. Taking the time. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, whether you're listening on YouTube or any one of the other podcast sites. Very much appreciated. Um, sharing is caring. Subscribing is wonderful. Have a spectacular day.